All right, if you would open your Bibles, please, to Psalm 119. Typically, we have uh, one of the elders come up and, and share from uh, the word in the devotion. <clears throat> this time, there was so much happening, and so it was difficult to tell who was going to be here uh, that I, I've got this one covered today. We are gonna, we're going to begin at verse 57 of Psalm 119. <clears throat> the title of this one is Het. The, the thing that's been pointed out by those that have been sharing through Psalm 119 is that in this psalm specifically, each section has the first letter of the alphabet in the Hebrew language, and it goes through that, and then each verse within that section such as our section this morning, verses 57 to 64, in its original text begins with the letter het. So it would be, as you're reading it, this verse begins with that same letter, this verse begins with that same letter. It's, it's a poetic way of writing. It's more obvious in its original uh, language, but the what's important is what God is saying through the word, isn't it? He says in verse 57, You are my portion, O Lord. I've said that I would keep you, your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because your, of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. One of the things that have been, has been said um, specifically by J.C. is that he, in his teachings in Psalm 119, he said, I think it was about the word last time. Every section in here is about the love that David has for the word of God and that we should have for the word of God. And, uh, and it's when we first got saved and the Holy Spirit began to open the word to us and our understanding to it, wasn't it something that was like a hungry person who is tasting food for the very first time, and you just can't get enough. Um, you know, Rachel and Alex were down in Florida, and they, uh, when they got home and they, they opened the door, their cat, who had been without food for a few days, guess what he was all about? He could not get enough food. And really, that's the way that I'm sure we started out in our, in our walk with the Lord. How hungry were you? And are we more hungry today than we were in that day? I hope so. And there is what comes from spending that time in the word with the Lord is a, a filling within us of love because Jesus said, every verse is about me. You can see him in every verse. When he is teaching us through the word and our love of the word, he's doing so because it draws us closer to him. In verse 57, it says, you are my por portion, O Lord. I, the first thing that came to my mind when I read that very first sentence, you are my portion, O Lord, was the prodigal son. Because the prodigal son... He saw the richness that his father had, and he said to his father, give me my portion. I want my portion of your earthly goods. And then we're told that he went and he squandered that portion of earthly goods on riotous living. And when he came to that place of realizing he had nothing left, then he began to be hungry to be back at home. And that his portion at home, even the portion of the servants within his home, was greater than he was experiencing out there in the world. 
and he ran home. And expecting to have the portion of a servant, his father restored to him that which was due him as a son. And we can be in this place, and that's what we look at in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a hard book to read, right? It's a hard book because it's dealing with the, those that lived in the kingdom of Judah who were in a continuous cycle, just like the northern kingdom had been, of squandering the portion that God made available to them in the relationship with him. And then they would find themselves in that place of having nothing again and then make a, that turn to repent. Eventually, as we have been made very much aware, God says, this is going to have, you're going to have to go into time out now. This is, this is what's coming. Our portion is the Lord. We look around and say, you know, I, I, I have things in this world, and they're a blessing that comes from the Lord, but they're just things. They are blessings. My portion is the Lord himself. Our, the study last week was called what? Our hope is the Lord. And it's not the things that he gives us, it's him. And so this is what he's telling us in Psalm 119, verse 57. You are my portion. That's where all my joy is found. That's where all my resources are, is in you. <clears throat> he says, I've entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. He's talking about, I desire to know you with my whole heart. One of the things that I don't, I don't even know where he came up with. The youngest grandson, Decky, who was here last week, when I tell him, I love you with all my heart, his response is always the same. And it's like, I love that response. It is, and I don't go, Decky, that's grammatically incorrect. You, that's, you're using language that he says, I love you with my whole big heart. He loves me with his whole big heart. And then yesterday, as we were on a walk, he said, Grandpa, do you love me with your whole big heart? Oh, boy, you sure, you know I do. That is the, the relationship that the Lord wants to have with us. We love him with our whole big heart. And his heart is bigger, and he loves us. That is the relationship he desires to have with us. David writes, I thought, in verse 59, I thought about my ways and turn my feet to your testimonies i was walking in a way that was not leading to you and i turned to your testimonies i made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments you know it's it's an awesome thing to be in a hurry to to run to the lord but you have to keep your eyes fixed upon the lord in order to do that you have to know him and you have to run towards him i had an experience as a child that I was in a race with somebody on my bike. And my bike was really cool. It was a Stingray with big, tall handlebars and a sissy bar on the back. And I thought I was something. And I got in a race with my friend. And I thought, I'm going to win. I'm going to pump with all that I got. And I've got my head down, and I'm pumping. Problem was, my head was down. I did not have my eyes fixed upon the goal. I had my eyes fixed on my feet. And I'm pumping and pumping. Guess what I found? The hood of a car. A parked car. I just, I just veered off. Didn't know I was veering off. Next thing I know, I'm on the windshield of that parked car. And, and it, you, we could be in a hurry, but we have to keep our eyes fixed upon the author and the finisher of our faith. That's Jesus. Don't drift because you may find yourself in the windshield of a parked car. And, and the Lord says, be in a hurry to run to me, but be in a hurry to run to me. Keep your eyes fixed on me, and, you, and we will keep the accidents to a minimum. He said, the cords of the wicked have bound me, but I've not forgotten your law. In other words, David is saying, you know, there, there are those, and, and if you're familiar with David's life, there were always people who, was, who were after him. There were always people who were trying to take his throne. There were always, including his son, there were always people trying to do evil against him. He said, even though all that's going on, even though all this evil is taking place all around me, my eyes are on the Lord. I have not forgotten you, and I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I'm a companion of all who 
fear you and of those who keep your precepts. It's fellowship with other, other believers. I have a lot of relationships. We have a lot of relationships, but I, I, I know the ones that encourage me the most are you people right here. Because you are the ones, brothers and sisters in the Lord, who love the Lord. I love being able to fellowship with you, and I look forward to it. When you're not here, I'm a little sad. Yeah, and that's the truth. As a child, and, I, and I, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's an issue I have. As a child, I grew up in a, at a time where you had 30 kids in the classroom. That's just the way that it was. And the teacher is trying to create, uh, you know, some companionship or whatever would rearrange the, the classroom from time to time. Sometimes they're around the perimeter. Sometimes they're in rows. Sometimes they're in clumps of fours. No matter how the teacher rearranged the room, I knew when somebody wasn't there, and I was sad. Why aren't they here? Even if there was only one out of 30 who wasn't there, I, I, I was sad. I love fellowship. Do you love fellowship? It is, a, it is a blessing to be able to do that. Many places on the, in the world, they can't. They can't gather together as we do. They can't open the, the word the way that we do. As JC was speaking last week uh, in the devotion, he said, there are places on, on the face of the earth, if you're sitting with a Bible in your hand, that's the end of your time here on earth. We are blessed to be able to do that here, to be able to join together, and my heart gets a little sad when one of us isn't here. My heart rejoices when you are here, especially Ed. My heart rejoices when Ed is here. <laughs> Verse 64 says, The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. I wrote down, the earth is full of his mercy. The earth is full of his grace. And the earth is full of his love. We are those who know his grace, his mercy, and his love. Most of the world does not. Even though he extends it to them, they don't know him. And they need to come to know him, that he is gracious. He is merciful. He's long-suffering. And it's because he loves us. And he desires that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for the amazing grace that you have shown to each one of us here and so many around the world that when we are in your throne room, when we enter into eternity, that everyone there will be able to say the very same thing. We are all there because you are gracious, because of the faith that we have and the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ and him alone. We thank you and we praise you for this day the things that you want to say to us and through us for your glory. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you would turn with, your, with me in your Bibles over to Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew 26, Jesus and the disciples are in the upper room. How many in here have been to Israel? That is awesome, isn't it? If the tour that I was on, one of the places that we were at towards the end of the tour was the upper room. And in that upper room, uh, it was an amazing place because the worship there was, was incredible. One of the things that happens, and one of the things I love about this house is that there are the acoustics in here are, are I, I love the acoustics in here. I, if you sing loud enough, I can hear you worshiping. Hint, hint. But in the upper room, there, there is no carpet. The acoustics are incredible. And so as we were worshiping there and, and receiving the teaching of the word, when it concluded, there was a time of worship there. And to worship in, an, it doesn't mean it's the same upper room, but it is, it was the celebration of what was done in that, in that upper room, in this upper room. And that is the changing from the old covenant to the new covenant. <coughs> from that blood which was covering sins to the precious blood of our Savior, 
which washes away the sins of all who receive and believe. And in verse 26 of Matthew 26, it says, As they were eating, that Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This, in this moment, Jesus is giving to them that which they are to do and which we are to do in remembrance of the sacrifice of the Lamb, the Holy Lamb of God. To take bread and to take the cup in remembrance of the body and the blood which was broken and shed for us. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much that you would send your son. Jesus, we love you and we thank you that you love us so much that you would come. And that all that had taken place prior to the cross was a picture of that which was to take place upon that cross. The blood of oxen and sheep could only cover the sins of those who by faith looked to that cross forward. But we as your people here this morning are those who look back to the cross 2,000 years and know by faith, because it is your word, that when you died upon that cross, you took away the sins of the world and that all who would receive and believe would be saved. We are those here this morning among many on the earth today that celebrate the love that you have for us, and the price that you paid for our sins. You and you alone were able to wash away the sins of the world. You and you alone are the one who was able to conquer death and to give to us life everlasting with you. As we take communion together, we give you thanks and praise for your amazing grace and your amazing love. And we do so in Jesus' name. Amen.